Richard, let's just start off with the basics here. How many of your movie theaters around the world are open right now, if any? There's about 150 open, um, all internationally. Um, I think there's one or two in the U.S. maybe um, still open. The biggest territory still open is Russia with about 50 screens. Okay. And, and let's talk China because we bring you on many times and we always do end up talking about it since it's an important component of your overall business. Things are getting better there. Uh, things are opening up. When do you think you're going to have screens beginning to open again uh, in China? Yeah, I mean, David, because this happened in China before the rest of the world and because we have a sizable business there, we got an, an earlier dose of reality than many people. And um, while it wasn't pleasant at all and still isn't, um, we, you know, we have an early look into how this thing might run its course. So where it's at now in China is um, about 21 multiplexes are open. None of them have IMAXs in them. By the end of um, March, uh, m many more theaters are going to start to open. The government has started a process where they're um, giving lists of what movies might be available and what, um, what cities are going to allow theaters to open. And um, I expect to see more open by mid-April. And then I think our team over there believes that things will be close to a regular schedule by early May with new Chinese movies being released. Of course, this is all subject to the caveat um, that people stay healthy and that this plan works. As I saw you guys report this morning, um, there have been, in the last few days, there have been no new cases in China. Um, uh, you know, I think that that includes today, including from visitors coming yes. in to China. But, I, you know, I think we just, it looks good, but I think everybody's going to go slow. Yeah, of course. Uh, would expect that to be the case. Um, you are in a pretty good position to withstand this period, I think, Richard, in terms of your balance sheet, uh, which uh, does not have a, a lot of debt on it. How long can you go here? And I mean, I know it's so difficult to try to figure out when things may return to a semblance of normalcy. But what are you trying to work with, at least, and when you think about your business returning to some semblance of what it was prior to this crisis? So the first thing we do is we run a model that says we're going to have no revenues and we're going to make very few changes. And how long could we last on that, you know, kind of very conservative assumption? And our answer is over two and a half years without any changes. So while this is awful at so many levels from a existential threat to our business, you know, that, that there really is none. We also have um, the experience of in 2000 and 2001, um, the entire exhibition industry worldwide uh, virtually went bankrupt. And it was an extremely difficult time. Fortunately, we weren't one of them, and that's one of the reasons why we managed our uh, balance sheet so conservatively over the last number of years, because we've seen it. But as a company, we used that period of time to transition from analog to digital, to invent our enhancing DMR process, and to in, in, invent our joint venture structure. So one of the things we're really trying to be focused on is if you're fortunate enough to be a company that doesn't have a, a life threatening sort of uh, company threatening existence, you know, how do you keep the troops motivated and how do you get them incented and how do you innovate? And we're very focused on that. Yeah, Richard, this is Morgan. And in terms of those troops, with so many of your locations closed right now, what is happening to those employees? Are they furloughed? Are you having to consider something like layoffs? So um, IMAX is a technology license company. So we get the films from Hollywood. We put in our systems around the world in 82 countries, and we get a license fee um, from the studios and from our exhibition partners. As a result, the employees those employees are not ours. Um, they're employed by our partners, the companies. In, in China, um, for the two months that this has been going on, um, we haven't laid off anyone. And, um, you know, this is all new, than th this phase, phase of it, and we're hoping to keep that to a minimum.
Hey, Rich, it's Carl. Um, obviously, we've got a lot, a, t a lot of hard work to do in the next several months. But on the back side of that, how does the movie going experience change? We've talked to airline analysts who suggested, look, for social distancing, we're going to have to lose the middle seat. Um, are we going to put every, uh, people every five feet? And, and what does the collapse of the theatrical window mean for movie theaters? So it's a, it's a very complicated answer, Carl. I'll try and do it as briefly as I can. But I think in the short run, there are likely, assuming the health issues are addressed, there will likely be a fairly sharp, sharp bounce back. And the reason is that a lot of the films that are getting postponed in 2020, uh, like the Bond film and like uh, Black Widow from Marvel, they're going to be bunched in the second half of this year. And 2021 also looks like a very good year. So in the short run, I think there's going to be a lot of incentive uh, for people to go out, especially after being cooped up and going through their entire streaming service library three times over. Um, in terms of the windowing questions, um, you know, during this period of time, a couple of studios have shortened the window in order to amortize their investments and um, have programming for consumers trapped in the home. But I, I don't think the windowing is going to change dramatically. Um, over the next couple of years. And if it does, IMAX shows blockbuster movies and people like to be in communities and they like to socially interact to go to those kinds of things. So, you know, the, one of the few fortunate things of having been in my job for over 25 years and at a company that's open over 50 years, a, a lot of things happen that in the short term lead, like they're gonna, uh, lead you to believe they're going to be long-term trends but people's habits um, tend to stay the same. I was in Pompeii last year, and people went to see live in entertainment there. Um, I think it's around 1000 B.C., maybe it's a little later than that. But I think these kind of social entertainment experiences have been around for a long time and are going to be around for a long time.